I'm joined right now by Carter Abasa, who's the head of developer relations at Data Stacks. Data Stacks, data, data. <laughs> tomato, tomato. How are you doing? That's right, I'm doing awesome. <laughs> cool, so what are we talking about today? Okay, so uh, we're gonna talk about uh, how developers can build RAG applications using Langflow, AstroDB, and Azure. Cool. And I'm going to be flying through this, so buckle up, all right? All right, I've got my seatbelt on. So we're gonna, we're gonna, first we're gonna show, I'm gonna show you how you can build RAG applications using this awesome tool called Langflow. Um, after we use Langflow, I'm gonna show you how you can take what you built and bake it into just a regular Python Flask application. And then we're gonna deploy this to Microsoft Azure. I'm gonna show you some cool observability uh, capabilities using something called LangSmith. And then if we have time, we'll do some wrap up and Q&A. So first, uh, my name is Carter Rabasa. Hi, uh, Carter. My, hi, hello. <laughs> my, my, my pronouns are he, him. Uh, as mentioned, I work in developer relations at Datastax, and I'm just a huge Gen AI nerd. Um, but I only started doing this about six months ago. So I'm really new to AI programming, and after talking to like a lot of people here at Build, I think you are all pretty new to it too, right? Yes. So we're, we're all learning this together. Um, so I want to start by saying like, what is RAG? Thank you. Yeah, right? <laughs> Th that acronym has been popping Toss up. It's everywhere. It's everywhere. So it stands for Retrieval Augmented Generation. Still not helpful. Uh, the way that I like to think about RAG is with this iceberg, meta this iceberg metaphor. So LLMs are trained on public data. They know, they, you know, they scrape the internet and that's what they know. But if you want to build like an intelligent piece of software that operates on data that isn't public, it's behind your firewall, it's in your database, right? Well, how do you do that? Because the LLMs don't know about you, the stuff that's in your SQL server. So uh, that's where RAG comes in. So, uh, it's time to buckle up. We're going to do some coding. So first, um, I'm going to be mean. I'm going to show you where uh, LLMs fail by asking about one of my favorite movies. I'm going to ask, uh, when, <laughs> when was Dune 2 uh, released in theaters? March right? 2024? So uh, pretty close. Pretty close? Well, guess what? Guess who doesn't know? Uh, ChatGPT GPT doesn't know. In fact, oh. it doesn't even know that there was a Dune 2 movie, right? No. <laughs> now look, I, you guys think I'm cheating. You're like, Carter, use a newer LLM. It'll know about Dune 2. Sure, but uh, that, doesn't, that's, that, that, that doesn't matter because those new LLMs still don't know about your private data, the stuff behind the firewall, and that's where RAG comes in. So what I want to do is I'm going to use, I'm a, I'm a Dune 2 fanboy, I'm a Dune fanboy, I'm a Denis Villeneuve fanboy. Oh. He's so talented. We're going to, we're going to build, we're going to use ChatGPT 3.5 with data from this Wikipedia page to build an intelligent chatbot. So how are we going to do that? First, uh, I'm going to use resources from Microsoft. So this is just a quick start that I found on your documentation that shows me how to build a simple Flask app and how to deploy it to Azure using containers. Perfect. So I'm just getting started by cloning this repo and I'm using this as a basis for building this chat application. And I'm doing this because I wanna to prove to you that you can use these tools I'm about to show you with the tool chains that you already use. So I've gone ahead and cloned this and here's Visual Studio Code. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add a, I'm gonna add a tool called Langflow. And that's as easy as pip install Langflow. So I'm gonna show you my readme. Right. You're just gonna pip install Langflow. And then once you pip install it, you can run it from the command line. And it's going to spawn this uh, web-based visual editor for building these AI flows. And it looks exactly like this. I've gone ahead and created a Dune 2 chatbot. So I mentioned- Oh, I love these. Yeah. I'm a visual person, so I like- you know, Yeah. See the well, I'm gonna zoom out. I'm gonna zoom out for a minute. So building RAG applications is a two-step process. First, you have to take the data that the LLMs don't know, and you have to ingest it into a vector database. So let's talk about that. So I'm gonna zoom in. That's what's happening right here. I am taking the URL for the Wikipedia page, and I'm ingesting it into my application. I'm then running it through something called a recursive character text splitter. It's taking that whole Wikipedia page and breaking it into chunks of 1,000 characters. And then I'm taking all of those chunks and I'm, in, I'm storing them in my vector database. But before I do it, I'm gonna run it through something called a, an embedding model. So I'm gonna take that text and I'm gonna convert it into something called vector embeddings. And that's, I'm gonna store the text and the embeddings in the vector database. So AstroDB is the, the vector database from Datastax. Mm -hmm. And it allows you to store 
uh, non-vector data. So here are all, on the right are all the chunks from the Wikipedia page, but it also allows you to store vector data, which is what we got from the LLM. So, and when you say vector data, that's another term that gets floated around. I know, sorry. So vectors are these, uh, these really, really long arrays of numbers. And the way that I would ask you to visualize it, if you give an LLM the word dog, it'll create a vector that's like a point in space. Ah. If you give it the word cat, it'll give it another point in space that's near dog. But if you give it the word truck, it's a point <laughs> all out. the way over here, yeah. right? So these vectors represent um, points in space and similar concepts and similar data get grouped it together, right? Mm -hmm. And that's what you're, and that's what, I'm gonna show you how that works with vector search. So the so, closer they are, the more similar. Absolutely. So now uh, we've ingested our data. Uh, there are 105 chunks of data in my database. Now we're gonna build the chat experience. And that is what we have right here. And I'm gonna go ahead and run this using the interactive playground that's built into Langflow. So let's go ahead and ask the question that failed, right? Right. When was the movie released? And hopefully it will say March 1st, because that is the truth. And indeed, very soon it will. Awesome, March 1st, 2024. Hey. But I wanna show you how that happened, right? So let's zoom in and, and walk through the steps. So we asked the question. The question itself is converted into a vector. It's converted into that array of numbers. That vector is then used to execute a vector search. Remember, we had 105, uh, I can show you, we have 105 documents in my vector store, but we don't need all 105 to answer the question. So I'm gonna execute a vector search from on the, the vector created from the question. I'm gonna get the top four documents back, and I'm gonna pass those four documents to something called a prompt. So this is my prompt. All of the content from the database is being injected into this variable called context. And then I'm telling the LLM, given the context, answer the question as best as you can. And then, it, and then I, I remind the LLM what the question was. Now, one thing that's great about Langflow is that you can see the data as it flows through the system. So I can hover over this and I can Ooh. see the raw, the raw, the results from my vector search. And then over here, I can hover over this, and I can actually see the entire prompt that I construct all the way down to the question that I'm asking. Wow. Yeah. That's so, a pretty long prompt, too. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, but here's, but here's the deal. Here's what I want everyone to remember. When you use OpenAI to run these, uh, to, to sort of ask these questions, OpenAI is charging you based on how much data you pass it. Right. So if I hover my mouse over here, I can see that I passed it 1,096 tokens of data. OpenAI and all these hosted LLMs charge you based on the number of tokens. So it's important to know that not only are you saving money by passing less information to the LLM, you're also getting more accurate answers. If you pass information to the LLM, like the entire Wikipedia page, where most of the data in, on that page is completely irrelevant to the question that I asked, there's a chance that the LLM is gonna hallucinate and maybe give you a wrong answer. Right. So this is, so using a vector database and using vector search gives you more accurate answers and it saves you money with your LLM. So less is more. Yeah, less is more. So anyway, so we've built this flow, we're happy with it, but now it's not an app yet. We wanna turn this into an app that people can use. So let's do that. We're gonna click on API and we're gonna go over to Python code and all you have to do is copy this code and paste it into your Python application. Wow. And, and, you all, and you also are going to export this flow as a JSON file, download that, and then you're gonna reference that in your application. So let's switch over to Visual Studio Code and see what that looks like. Also, is Langflow just Python compatible or can you use other languages with it? No, that's a, that's a great question and, and thanks for asking. So uh, right now, Langflow is only for Python, but this is actually really useful for you all to know. Everything that you're seeing is Python code and everything that you're seeing is actually built on top of a tool called Langchain. So Langchain is the most popular framework for building AI applications and Langflow is this fantastic UI built on top of Langchain. So I'm gonna go back to my uh, Python application. This is what it looks like. Remember, this is just what I cloned from the quick start. Right. All I did was paste in that code that you saw, mm -hmm. and then down here, I'm gonna create a route called chat, and I'm gonna invoke Langflow using this run flow from JSON method. 
I'm going to give it the name of my JSON file, and I'm going to pass in the input value that I get from my web form, right? So let's see what that looks like. So I'm going to go ahead and fire up Flask and show you exactly what this web app looks like. Boom. So this is going to be running locally on port 5000. So let's go over to my browser and reload this page. And presto, you've got my web app. So let's go ahead and ask it a new question. I'm going to ask it, uh, what was the meme about? Do you, do you know what meme I'm talking about? Oh, do you remember? I don't actually. I don't remember. OK, well, let's see what the chatbot says. So there was a meme about Dune themed oh, popcorn. Right. <laughs> yes, yeah. the popcorn bucket, the famous <laughs> sandworm popcorn bucket, right? I wanted one of those so bad. Oh, I've got two. Oh. So anyway, so the so the chatbot now knows everything about Dune 2, uh, including the hilarious meme about the, the popcorn bucket. So now all that's left for us is getting this deployed to production, right? Right. Because like, this is just us. The world needs to know. The world needs to know about the popcorn buckets. So, um, so doing that is just super easy. You can use Azure to provision, uh, co provision a container application. And then once again, like this is, I'm new to this. All I did was follow the instructions on the quick start. Um, I, uh, I created this Docker file. I configured a Gunicorn. Uh, I built it locally. And then I deployed it to Azure using uh, the Azure CLI. It was insanely easy. And then next thing you know, here it is, deployed to azurecontainerapps.io. But of course, you can you know, build your own custom domain, your URL or domain for this app, right? Oh, I'm doing mine for Dune Messiah when that comes out. There you go. Awesome. Yeah. I'm going to build the Dune 2 fan bot. You build the Dune Messiah chatbot. We'll, we'll, we'll team up on this. Deal. So the last thing I want to show you before uh, I step away um, is an amazing observability tool called Lang Smith. So as I mentioned, Langflow is built on top of, on top of Langchain. Langchain is this super popular framework for building AI apps. Without adding a single line of code, all I had to do was create a Langsmith account and get an API key. All I had to do was put that API key in, my, in, in an environment variable when I deployed it to the container. And then automatically, Langsmith has gives me observability to all my LLM calls. So check it out. I can look at the most recent call that I made. This is the, this is the call where uh, I asked about the meme. So it's, this is all the content that it got back from my vector database. I can go back, I can go all the way to the bottom, and I can find the question that I asked. And I can see down here in the output what the output from the LLM was. But what, also, I have information about which uh, model provider I used, mm -hmm. exactly what model I used, and even how many tokens I used and what the cost of this was. So when you're building these, these AI applications and you're deploying them, sometimes they can be hard to debug because there's, there's a lot of chattiness between your app and the LLM. Mm -hmm. And Langsmith is this fantastic tool for giving you observability and visibility into what's happening with the LLM. So uh, anyway, going back to uh, my presentation, I hope that in this time, you all feel that like, you do not need to be a machine learning engineer to do these things. You do not need to, be a, you do not need to have a giant data science team to do these things. Like, these tools have gotten so good and so easy that even a very mediocre web developer like me can build a pretty reasonable like, AI application, and, and so can you. So I guess I'll just sort of like wrap up real fast. Like, thank you so much for having me. If you have any uh, questions that I didn't answer, scan this QR code. It'll send you to a web page that has more resources uh, on all of the things that I showed you. And thanks so much for having me. Sweet. You did it with one minute to spare. Nice. <laughs> wow. <laughs> That was great. And yeah, what you said about AI being for everyone, with tools like that, it really does feel that way. Like, I love seeing the, um, yeah, I, I just really enjoy seeing that there's stuff for visual people like me, like with Langflow, to be able to break them all down. Being able to see the cost of things, I think, is very important <laughs> at yeah. the end of the day. So having all those tools to make it easy to manage the LLMs that you're working with, as well as being able to put out your general flow of events for the AI chat is really No doubt. And then also, I mean, it's, it's really important. Like, there's a lot of chat, a lot of conversations about, like, responsible AI. We need more people and more kinds of people building AI apps. Absolutely. Right? Um, so I just think these tools are, are making that possible. Sweet. Well, thank you so much, Carter. And again, if you want to learn more about data stacks or the work that Carter is doing, please go check out their booth, or you can check them out on the feature partner directory. So thanks, Carter, and thanks, y'all. Awesome. Thank you. Bye-bye. Yeah.